loads of blackberries here little tip for you try and get the ones higher up don't go for the ones down the bottom because the dogs might have weed on them <laughs> how do good morning hope you're all all right real early start for me this morning i got up about half four in the car for five o'clock and i've driven about two and a half hours south to kent and i'm on the isle of grain you can only access it at low tide that's why i'm out so early it's just gone quarter to eight low tides at half eight and then i'll be making my way on really stoked for this camp i can't wait for you guys to see it all you might know about this place already but I'll fill you in on some more of the facts when I get there. So let's have a good camp. Thank you as always for joining me. Let's do it. Obviously there's gonna be no wood on there. So I've brought three little bags of kindling and a new little wood stove by Fire Maple with me just to give that a go. But the tide's out enough now, I reckon it's time to get on there. Well, there you go. So for the most part, it's a little bit silty. There used to be like an old brick road out to this. Most of it's covered or eroded away. But you can see in the distance, we do get a little bit of a path further on. I just wanted to show you how much of a strategic position this is because you've got the river medway there the fort and then the river thames there the address is actually number one the thames which is pretty cool here we are then here's a mess sorry there's a ladder at the bottom to help you get up but this place is really impressive. I found it a little spooky last time actually on my own. Come night time. Yeah, here we go, look. That's how you get on. You can see the tide marks. Massive place. See what I mean? I'm not the only person. Looks like I may have company already. Last time I was on here, I wasn't bothered by anybody at all for the whole 30 hour period that I was on here. To be honest, I don't fancy other campers. Doesn't look like they've got kit with them though. Well, there's loads of history and loads of information about this place. Should we do one of those voiceovers of all the B-roll? Yeah, let's do that. Right, voiceover from home, let's go. It stands about 500 meters offshore at the eastern tip of the Isle of Grain, where the mouth of the Medway meets the Thames. It was constructed on the tidal sandbank of Grain Spit and is reached by a causeway running in an east to west direction from the shoreline. Its location enabled the tower's arc of fire to overlap with that of the guns at Garrison Point on the Isle of Sheppey on the other side of the Medway. Construction began in 1848 but difficulties were soon encountered in laying the foundations and construction pools until 1853. It was completed in late 1855 and was handed over to the Ordnance Authorities on the 17th of November that year. By this point it had gone more than 50% over budget, costing £16,798 which is equivalent to £1.7 million today. It was built along the same lines as the Martello Towers that were constructed along the British and Irish coastlines in the early 19th century and it's the last built example of a gun tower of this type. It owed its existence to the need to protect the important dockyards at Sheerness and Chatham. By the end of the 19th century the tower had gained a new significance as a defence against raids by fast torpedo boats. It was used in both the First and Second World Wars when its fabric was subsequently altered to support a new quick-firing gun. It was repeatedly altered and its guns upgraded at various points in history, before being decommissioned in 1956 when the UK abolished its coastal defence programme. The tower has been privately owned since 2005 and was reportedly sold to a new owner in 2014 for £400,000. I've read an article recently that says it's up for sale for £2 million, so I don't really know what the current status of it is.
One thing I learned from last time is not to use this staircase. You can see right in the middle there where it's cracked, it's all bowed. Well last time I just came straight up here with my kit, didn't I? And then when I went back downstairs, I looked up and I saw how bowed there it was. You can kind of see it from here. Okay, I think I'm in the spot that I'm going to camp at. It's a bit of a tactical decision. I brought that ladder up from the very bottom and it just means when I'm up here, I can pull the ladder up, lay it here and then nobody can get to me from anywhere. And then I'll just lay my roll mat down here, exactly the same place as I did last time. I mean, realistically, once the tide comes in, no one's going to come on here anyway. So there's a spot on that side that I've looked at with the nice view out the front and you can see down to the water as well. So I'm considering camping there still, but I just know this is a really good spot and I've had a fire in here before in my little stove and everything. So yeah, undecided. But I reckon in the meantime, let's go and have a walk up them rickety old stairs and have a look where the guns used to be. I mean, look at the handrails. Top quality handrails. Not going anywhere anytime soon. He says. This is where one of the gun emplacements was. Not much to see now, but a really cool piece of history. And here we are. This is where the elevator shaft with the munitions would have come up. Straight to the guns. I saw a couple of group camps on YouTube. A few people stayed down here and had a barbecue there. But I don't know, this spot just doesn't do it for me. Unless it was the ledge up there. I'd consider that. I've set myself up a few catty targets, which I'll shoot from what we'll call the bush shelter down there. Uh oh. Unfortunately, because the low tide was so early, there was no shops open for me to reload on catty ammo. So it's going to be good old fashioned stones today. <laughs> yeah, sorry for that impression. <laughs> Another cool camp spot. Solid. Bit windy though for that. View from the very top. My other bedroom window. View from my front garden. Pays to be a winner. So it's just gone 10 o'clock now and I've got until about three o'clock this afternoon until the next high tide. So I'm gonna get my bed space squared away, probably chill out for a little bit, and then I might go back down and then just get some shots of the surrounds of the whole building. It's pretty impressive, isn't it? Let me know what you think, it's pretty cool.
We're about to be stranded. And I'm buzzing. <laughs> really cool camp spot, eh? Look at that, the water about to meet. I'm sorry for all the camera shake in this video as well, by the way, because I've completely knackered my tripod now, so I need to order a new one, which I'll be getting in a couple of weeks. But yeah, this video and the next one might be a little bit shaky. Sorry. The way I film my videos, I feel like it's just so much easier to walk around with the camera sometimes. But uh, I do appreciate the good tripod shots too. The tide's starting to come in now, look. And I'm settled in. Just got the Ish Roll mat, Ish Bivy bag, Firmerous pillow, and then the thin summer bag. And that's it for my sleeping kit. I've got my little kneeling pad there as well. Got a lantern slash speaker by Mifa. They sent me this a few months ago and it's so good. I use it on all my trips now. I thought I'd do something a little bit different today because there's not a great deal I can do or show you on here. So I thought I'd go through all my kit with you. Everything that's in my bag that I've got on this trip, some things that always live in my bag, some stuff that's just for this trip. And I empty my bag and repack my kit for every trip. So I've always got different kit. So I just thought I'd show you specifically for this one. I've got the speaker, my mobile phone, this little bag, canvas bag that I keep my Pocket Rocket 2 and gas in. And then I've got a windshield, a ferro rod, wooden bowl, a grill. The grill lives in my kit all the time. My cup and my coffee press and my spoon, they're becoming permanent features that are in there all the time. My spork, which is in there all the time with my skillet, I kind of chop and change. If I'm just doing grill food, I won't bother with the skillet, but if I'm doing breakfast, I'll still take the skillet. Um, the spatula that I knocked up the other day, I still haven't sanded it. My York knife, some Mackey's napkins, because that's all I had in the car. I've got my strop and ceramic sharpener with the pastes. Some white rose insect repellent spray mist, a silver torch, a nano first aid kit with a proper bandage because doesn't matter how good you are, we can all make mistakes. Bag of coffee, Jacoby catapult, my toothbrush, toothpaste, there's some baby wipes that expand with water in there, uh, plasters, zinc tape, that sort of stuff. Patchouli incense and pyramids incense. Shout out to the Wickham Way for always making my camp smell good and for sending the two extra beers. Thank you so much. Absolute legends. I'm going to leave the website below because that's the second care package now. And there was like 12 different boxes of incense in there. So I'm really grateful. I've got the Steak Detective candle. The new fire maple stove which I'll be cooking on this evening. And I shouldn't really be showing you this, but they've got a lot of personal value to me because they belong to Simon, who I served with abroad. The reason I brought the Pocket Rocket 2 and the gas was basically just in case I couldn't get a hold of kindling, and it's just a backup if I end up burning it all tonight. I can still cook breakfast and have a coffee in the morning. And I think that's about it. Last time I was here, I used the Pocket Rocket 2, but it was really windy. Uh, I even had it in between these concrete channels, so this time I brought the little windshield with me which should make a difference if it picks up later on. That's it, everything I've got in my bag. I'm pretty sure I explained through it all. Might seem like a lot to some people, might not seem like a lot at all for other people. But that's my kit. In bushcraft, everybody says that you should use your whetstones at home and just strop out in the field. I've started to use this little ceramic block when I'm out in the field just because I find it really therapeutic. It's nice to just sit there and really hone the edge of your blade. And I always keep my knife well stropped. Just been looking through the binos. I can see there's a lifeboat out there. And I can tell there's three people out on the deck. You can't even see it on this camera. There is something kind of cool about being able to see all the traffic coming in and out of the Thames. I guess just because it's such a famous river. And you know it leads to the capital, so... Kind of cool. Sorry for keeping you all waiting. I know lots of you have been asking, but the new logo stickers are here. They're 70mm, waterproof, gloss finish. 
Two pound a pop, if you want one, just email me, eastanglianbushcraft at gmail.com and I'll just file you like a PayPal link or something. Two pound each to the UK, if it's abroad it's going to have to be like three quid just to cover the postage. But And just to save you asking me the question of where I got these done, I'll put the link down below, it's at sticker slangers on Instagram. They've come out really well. If anyone fancies another challenge, quick shout out to the goat, Mr Hayes for giving me the idea. But I'll leave five here. First one to get them, keeps them. Please send me a photo, I'll put it up in the next video. Go on, lad. Just had a little catty shoot. I got four of them down. And then the wind took one. And there's two still up there, but it's really hard to get on with the stones. I just want to say thank you to everyone that's donated so far to the charity link. If you missed the last video, in November I'll be doing a 200 mile high ground East Anglia um, from Pedder's Way up to the northwest corner, doing the whole of the Norfolk Coastal Path and then the whole of the Suffolk Coastal Path, which comes in at about 200 miles. And I'll be raising money for veterans at ease because they've personally helped me out. Um, I'm going to be boring you guys with this just to try and raise as much money as possible. But um, yeah, thanks for everyone that's donated so far. Link's going to be down below as well. If you'd like to donate, it'd be really awesome. It's a worthy cause and uh, it'd really mean a lot to me. Thank you very much. Is it any good? We shall find out. Thank you to Fire Maple for letting me try this out. Got a few feather sticks in there, some shavings, and then some real fine stuff with the back of the knife. I'm so close to my pension, my left wrist is 61. My left wrist retiring. We've got company. Fire is on, pan's on. I'm gonna get this dinner cooked quickly because I don't really want to keep this fire burning. I'm having lemon chicken tonight. Just got some basmati in a pouch. It's the microwavable ones, but you can just boil it up. I'm just gonna add it into there, to be honest. And then some bends. First time I've done lemon chicken when I've been camping. Oh, I'm getting hungry now as well, and that's looking really good. Whoever made that sauce needs a pay rise. There's someone else coming again now. There's been loads of people today, honestly. Well, hopefully that's the last of the people gone now. I managed to stay real stealth and silent, so uh, yeah, pretty happy with that. Managed to get some clips of them as well, which is pretty funny, isn't it? Well, it's just gone eight now, and I don't really think I'll be doing anything too exciting tonight. But yeah, just going to chill out now, watch this water, watch the ships, 
and uh, let my dinner go down. That was lovely. If I don't say any more to you tonight, then I'll speak to you in the morning. But um, really, I want to set an alarm if my phone battery will last because I brought the speaker which charges my phone, but I didn't bring the cable. So there's about 25% left of my phone. I'm going to airplane mode it. Not that it matters anyway, I'm not too fast, but if I can get an alarm then that'd be cool. And then I'll try and record the sunrise. Fingers crossed it's a good one. Spooky windows. You hear all sorts around here on your own, honestly. I thought I've heard footsteps. The door slamming up there, the big steel one. If you get scared easy, this is not the one for you. I saw a massive spider behind my pillow earlier and I don't know where it's gone. It could be in my bivvy bag. It's times like last night that I wished I'd splashed out on a Thermarest inflatable mat. Closed foam cell mats straight onto the concrete is never a comfy sleep. It's a little bit spooky to be honest with you, especially looking in them windows in the night time. You always feel like you're seeing shapes go past when you look to the side or something like that. Like I kept looking over at the sea or the rivers and uh, I kept thinking that someone was running past the windows. I was proper booking myself out. <laughs> Morning by the way. I heard loads of noises through the night. As I was saying, I heard loads of noises through the night. I woke up a couple of times with um, the spray cans that people had left rattling around, like either dropping down the stairs or something. So I did wake up a couple of times. Uh, the wind did pick up a little bit during the night. I didn't even manage to get any night shots last night because I fell asleep before it was even fully dark. When I got in my sleeping bag, because the wind started picking up, I just thought I'd get my sleeping bag for a bit of extra warmth, that was it gone out like a light. I managed to catch the sunrise this morning. Wasn't as spectacular as I was hoping for, but there were still some nice bits of orange coming through the clouds. Uh, I've packed up all my kit now. No trace, you can't see where the fire's been or anything like that. Everything's squared away. I've got my rubbish bag over there, good to go as well. So I'm gonna put this ladder down, have another little walk around maybe, and then uh, I think I'll be out of here. Didn't see that spider again either, so he could either still be in my sleeping bag or he's found a little nook somewhere. But uh, he didn't pester me in the night. And as always, thanks for joining me on another camp. A little bit of an out there one, this one. As I say, I really like doing them. They give me a little bit of a buzz getting out of the woods and doing these out the box camps. But yeah, please consider chucking us a subscribe if you've made it to the end of the video, you might as well. Thanks very much. Peace and love to you all.